This is the story of an ordinary man involved in extraordinary events. For 20 years, he was the secret link between the IRA leadership and the British government. His goal, to bring the two sides together, to talk peace. Throughout, he remained a shadowy figure, until now only known as the link. As the conflict raged, his identity remained one of its most closely guarded secrets. Without him, the IRA's historic ceasefire, the Good Friday Agreement, and today's remarkable political settlement might never have been achieved. I've known his identity for 10 years. He promised that one day he would tell me the story of his secret double life, when the time was right. That time has finally come. Were there moments when you thought that your life was under threat? All the time. All the time. There was people dying everywhere. There was people being blown up everywhere. Uh, people were living on the very edge. And I think there would have been no tolerance for somebody who was saying, well, you've got to try and understand that. Let's talk. I wanted to show people that actually the world can be changed. New Year's Eve, 1974. Brendan Duddy, a Londonderry businessman, is being driven to a secret location outside Dublin. He's about to make history, the first outsider ever to meet the IRA's ruling army council. First of all, go back to these rules for survival, for to be able to live. Number one, I don't want to see road signs. I don't want to know, I don't want to ask. Basically, I fuse myself out. Brendan Duddy was walking a perilous tightrope between the IRA leadership and agents of British intelligence. We came into the most enormous house that I'd ever been in. Absolutely, like, like something you would see, you know, almost a castle, this big, big house. And I got into an enormous drawing room, and there were these men round this table. Absolutely, you know, ICI, Board of Governors. Brenton Duddy came in, and he was a complete stranger. I'd never seen him before. And I was amazed because it wasn't uh, on the books for to bring anybody to an Army Council meeting. There was nobody at those meetings except Army Council men. He looked bloody scared when he came into that room, hadn't he? Brendan's life depended on convincing the Army Council he was not a British spy. The IRA's chief of staff, Seamus Toomey, sat in judgment. Uh, Seamus Toomey was in the chair and he says, OK, what's the story? And I said, I have been talking to a servant of the British government. I certainly didn't say uh, spy man MI6. And I says, the British are prepared to talk to you about this particular war which is going on at the moment. No one knew about Brendan Duddy's double life, only his family who shared it. A false word, a false step, could mean death. I mean, every day was another day of secrets. But they were not my secrets. I didn't want to know them. I shut everything out. And in fact, I, I would say that saved my life. Brendan Duddy had traveled a long way from running a fish and chip shop in Derry in the early 60s. I began to cook fish and chips and loved every second of it. And I would still say I was the best and still am. I understand potatoes, I understand fish, I love it. 
Brendan's wife, Margot, worked behind the counter. People came on at night and met up. It's like a meeting place. Everybody came on and met and sat and chatted. One of Brendan's oldest friends, Bernie Mount, was to play a crucial role in Brendan's secret mission. She worked in the fish shop too. This is me. You had all the boys coming in, didn't have enough money. You might have had to play the chips between four or whatever. And then at the weekend, they had more money and the jukebox was playing, the crack was good. Hamburgers were also on the menu, delivered by a certain young man by the name of Martin McGuinness. He would deliver the hamburger meat to the chip shop. Martin would take the box of hamburgers and simply walk the 40 yards across the road and put them on the counter and then have a chat with the girls. How do you remember him from those days? Polite, uh, innocent. Any interest in politics? Absolutely none. None. Just none. In the late 60s, the civil rights movement opened a new chapter in the tortured history of Northern Ireland. Derry's Catholics had suffered widespread discrimination for years. Although they were a majority in the city, the electoral boundaries had been manipulated to guarantee a Protestant council. The leaders of the radical left hung out in Brendan's chippy, among them one of his oldest friends, journalist Nell McCafferty. It is in William Street. It was a political salon for the more radical element. Uh, they'd come in for their, their tea and their chips at two or three in the morning after I had to discuss the night's events. We would retire back to Brenton's uh, fish and chip shop and keep talking. And he was the sort of guy that even as he's talking to you about uh, the RUC or a unionist or whatever, I mean, big, high-level political talk, he'd pause and say to the waitress, well, did you put on those chips fresh? Peaceful protest climaxed in violence as the predominantly Protestant police took on the rioters. We used to sit upstairs and watch the riots, and they were fierce. You felt safe, you were upstairs, and you were just sitting there watching. It's like watching a film. The policemen used to sit and rest up in between times, and then all you would hear is a roar, and then the young fellas would come down, down the street again, and they would take another point. And... But in the shadows, there were those who believed that peaceful protest would get nowhere. A resurgent IRA emerged, convinced that justice could only be won by driving the British out of Northern Ireland. To get away from it all, Brendan would retreat to the lonely hills near his home. While out hunting one day, he had an experience that he would never forget. With a, a rifle point two or two, this beautiful creature just stood up in front of me. So at that particular point, I shot it. And then I looked at this beautiful, beautiful creature that I'd just murdered. And I realized what violence was all about. the thoughts of men shooting at men. It was the display of futility in that, the understanding in an instant, this is not the way to live. Brendan despaired as he watched his city burn, powerless to stop the mayhem. Then, out of the blue, came his first opportunity to act as peacemaker. On Sunday in 1972, Derry was to be the venue for a huge civil rights march. Trouble was in the air.